Our next guests have just a most special story to tell. And for me, it speaks right to the heart of the power of love and family and, and vision and really, really understanding that bringing somebody's dream and vision to life is something that we can all do at some point. Lori Turley and Lisa Hodis are the sisters of Karen Foster. And Karen Foster wrote a book called Reasons for Waking. And she unfortunately passed away before she finished her book. And these two sisters, along with their other siblings, took it upon themselves to bring her dream to life. And so Lori and Lisa, thank you so much for being with us here today. I am honored to share your story and Karen's story with our Good Day community. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the book and, and why Karen was writing this book? Okay, the, the book is, um, it's about a family tragedy. Um, and it's, it's really more about how the tragedy affects the family and the family members' lives and how they um, found their way to healing. Um, Involving a mystery, and you know, it, it it brings in a lot of different things, but it's really a compelling story that's um, that's kind of hard to put down, um, but it really gets to the heart of, of family relationships. Um, so, why did Karen write this book? Well, Karen Karen loved writing. She loved books from a very early age, and then she loved writing, particularly creative writing. Um, she spent her career as a technical writer and editor, but creative writing was what she really loved. Um, so. She told us that that um, she could not imagine ever losing one of her siblings, um, but she wondered what if she had lost one of us, and then she wondered how our parents would handle it. What if they had failed to acknowledge the death in any discernible way? You know, how could they do something so unimaginable, um, and and how would that affect all of us? Um, then in 2013, um, Lisa unfortunately lost her 20-year-old daughter um, after a, a really a lifetime of, of um, a lot of illness. She, um, so um, after, the, after Jenny's funeral, we were sitting around the table at Lisa's home and Jenny's younger brother um, came in and somebody said, uh, asked him how he's doing. He, was, he said he was fine. And then Somebody asked Lisa, well, how, how is Ben doing? And she's like, oh, he's fine. And Karen said, well, I thought he's not fine. How could he possibly be fine? Um, but she knew that that's not what Lisa meant. She, Lisa just knew that Ben didn't want to be, you know, didn't want people to talk to him and, and all of that. Um, but Karen said it just sort of got her thinking and tied it back to the other um, things that she'd wondered about. And so she decided to write the book to explore the effect of tragedy and loss on family relationships. Um, and then also she was always fascinated by how ripples from events that should have no bearing on, on us um, and that we perhaps know nothing about um, come back and affect our lives in some way. So she sort of wove those things together and um, it ended up with as, or as reasons for waking. So it came out as a novel, but there is a biopic aspect to it. Is uh, what I understand yes, it. yes. Um, I, I would say that the the story itself is very different than anything that we or Karen experienced in our lives. But um, but at the same time, there were things that happened in her life that made her um, come up with the storyline. Lisa, tell us a little bit about Karen. A little bit about Karen. Well, Karen was the oldest of six kids. There were uh, five girls, one boy in our family. Um, so Karen was my older sister. I was second in line. Lori was fourth in line. Um, and Karen and I growing up, we always shared a bedroom because when you have a lot of kids, you share bedrooms. And, um, and so we, we, were, we were only one year apart in school. And so we spent a lot of time together growing up. Um, Karen was always uh, very thoughtful. Um, she was a good student. Um, she worked hard. She was a wonderful writer. And I know that because I was in the grade behind her and I got told that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Karen was, she was somewhat of an introvert. She, she didn't, uh, she wasn't a big talker. When she said something, it was because it had significance. Um, 
And she always lived her life, life very fiercely and independently. Um, she was born with a vision problem. Um, she only, she was born blind uh, from congenital cataracts. And uh, after six surgeries before she was two years old, uh, she was able to get about 3% of her vision and that's all she had all of her life. Uh, so she was legally blind. She was never able to drive, um, but she never let that stop her. Um, I can remember when she was young, my parents sent her to a school for the blind and they taught her how to use a white cane and to read braille. And she came home and she said, I'm never using that thing. And I'm, you know, she didn't want to draw attention to herself. She didn't want people to know that she was different. And most of her friends up until the time she died didn't realize how visually impaired she was. And, but that just makes it even more amazing that she was a writer and a reader and all those things that are hard when you're visually impaired, but yet that was her life. And that really describes her courage and her strength. Yeah, I think from everything I've read about her, she was so fierce in everything that she did. She, she loved what she loved and she was going to make her life from those things. So tell us about how the experience of publishing this book together has impacted you as a family. I can only imagine that it's been quite a wild ride. You want to start, Lori? Yeah, um, uh, yeah, I have to say it's been um, really a journey of healing for us. Uh, it's a way for us to stay connected to Karen. Um, you know, it's a way to honor her life and her accomplishments and, and really to demonstrate our love for her. Um, <clears throat> As we talk about the book, um, we talk about Karen, of course, and we uh, reminisce about our childhood and we share memories. Um, and we often wonder what, what in life inspired certain scenes in the book. Um, and it really makes us wish that we could talk to her and ask her lots of questions about it. Um, but, um, you know, we have um, meetings on Zoom once in a while to talk about the how things are going with the publishing. And, and usually once the business part ends, the Zoom sessions um, sometimes go on for hours <laughs> as we chat about things. And um, so, I mean, we've always been close, but, you know, as we've all lived different places and um, been busy with, with jobs and kids and all that kind of stuff, there's been times when we haven't been in as frequent touch, but now I, I would say we're in, uh, daily touch, more than daily touch. We're always texting each other and talking to each other and emailing. And um, yeah, so it's really in many ways brought us much closer together yeah. and closer to Karen too. And, and I would add to that, that um, it has also, I think caused all of us to reevaluate um, our own lives. We've had, uh, so we've lost Karen, we've lost my daughter, Jenny, we lost our dad. Um, our mom had to be, she's almost 90, had to be moved into assisted living. And all of it I think has made for each of us reevaluate what's important in life, the relationships and how important family is. Um, and so that even in doing that, it's reprioritizing and it's doing those things that are important to each of us. They just come into focus when you when you deal with grief and um, and have to process all of that. Well, I think you're not only blessed, incredibly fortunate to have each other and and also you know, grateful to Karen for leaving you this opportunity to not only remember her and, and bring you closer together, but give you each an opportunity to focus on your own strengths and bring that to the party. I know I have one brother and fortunately we play well as a team and we have completely different strengths. It is hard to believe that we came from the same parents and grew up in the same house, given the difference that we have in strengths. But in, in the face of crisis or difficulty or challenge or the need to come together to resolve anything, we bring different brain function. We really, we just do different skill sets. And you guys have taken that to, to kind of a, a new level. You really have created a small business behind this book of bringing your own strengths forward. So tell us a little bit about how everyone has shown up. Um, so somehow I got elected to um, work with the publisher on finishing up the edits that Karen wasn't able to finish. Um, and so, and I've been sort of the liaison between the publisher and, and our family. 
Um, uh, although Lisa is really helpful when I'm working on marketing things, um, like sometimes I'll write things up and then I send it to Lisa and all the emotion that I've taken out of things, Lisa puts back in and um, in a very appropriate way. So, um, so it's been really great to have each other to, to bounce those things off of. And we're both retired now, so we have a little more time on our hands. Um, David and Nancy are the two business people in our family. And so they've lent their business expertise um, and then our youngest sister, Beth, is um, the event planner and the social media person, and so she's taking care of that. Um, but even some of our spouses have gotten involved. Um, Beth's um, husband is, he's the one who designed our website, and, um, and David's wife uh, is a graphic designer, and so she's helped us with some of the marketing things as well. Um, so yeah, it's been, uh, it's been great. We all get, we get along well and we work well together. Um, and because we all have different strengths, I think that makes it a little bit easier. So we don't step on each other's toes and, um, uh, yeah, it's, we, you know, we get together to, for all the decision-making things. Um, uh, but other than that, we're, you know, we're just all sort of doing our thing to, to make it all come together. What an amazing legacy, really. Karen has, has left and you guys are continuing. And I, I, I want to um, ask you one more question about something that is close to my heart, which is dogs. Mm -hmm. And I know that Karen was very, very, uh, uh, very, very involved in, in the dog world and loved her dogs. Tell us, give us one story, um, dog related specifically oh. that, that comes to mind about Karen. Well, I can share one of my own experience with Karen and a dog, uh, but Karen, um, her first dog she got when she was 12 years old, she, her first love was horses. She loved horses. She really wanted a horse. And of course, being a military family that moved every couple of years, that was totally impractical and was never going to get past my parents. And so she decided she loved dogs. And so 12 years old, she got her first dog from the pounds um, named Candy. And that started her with learning dog obedience. And that was really the beginning um, of the process. Um, and then she switched to loving Springers, um, English Springer Spaniels. And so that was what she had most of her life. I think there was a cocker thrown in there at one point, cocker spaniel. Um, but she was very involved in the dog clubs around the Atlanta area where she lived, um, dog obedience, um, dog showing. And so she, she learned it from the ground up and became an expert in even some of the medical issues that dogs have. Um, and so at one point, uh, she called me, she was living in Atlanta, I was living in Florida, and she called me and she said, have you ever thought about having a dog? And I said, nope. <laughs> and she said, and I was newly married at the time, she said, well, I think it's time for you to have a dog. And I said, okay. And she said, and I have a Springer that needs a home. <laughs> I said, okay. And so I said, let me talk to my husband and we'll see. So we decided to take this dog, her name was Spring, was Cricket. And um, Karen had her, brought her down to me. And then Karen became my dog consultant extraordinaire because she knew everything, I knew nothing. And she taught me how to take care of this dog, what to do, even the medical stuff, uh, more than I wanted to know. Um, but, and she, the dog was already obedience trained, so I didn't have to do that. Um, but she, she wanted other people to enjoy dogs as much as she did. Um, and I think that, you know, for her, they were so important because they were her emotional support. And that's, I think, why she, even in the book, she included dogs that they, the dog plays prominently in the story because it's all about emotional support. And she knew that personally. Um, and she told me once too that her dogs also helped her being visually impaired when she was walking them, like she could tell when they stepped down and that helped her know that there was a step down. And so she, they also helped her in that way. Yeah. So they really became, she became one with, with them yeah. and they enabled her to live her life without the white cane, yeah. even though yeah. they were not seeing dogs. They weren't the kind of dogs that were trained specifically. I, I, no. I think Karen's life is, um, is, is a story you guys are going to want to tell uh, even separately going forward, but I'm so thrilled that you've been able to take this process completed for her and bring this story to the rest of us. Where can people find reasons for waking? 
Um, so <clears throat> uh, we do have a website, it's reasonsforwaking.com. Uh, we have a uh, Facebook page and Instagram, um, uh, same thing, Reasons for Waking. Um, but for the book, the book is um, actually available now for pre-sale. Um, it will be officially released on the 13th of June. Um, and it can be purchased on um, Amazon, on barnesandnoble.com. Um, most independent bookstores can order it um, for you. Um, or they can go to the, the Bold, Story, Bold Story Press uh, website as well and order it through there. Excellent. We love to support our independent bookstores when we can. And of course, coming to you directly is, is always wonderful. And I know the website has more information if our viewers are interested. Lori and Lisa, thank you so much for coming to share with us today. I appreciate you taking the time and I wish you the best of luck with the book. And thank you. we'll look forward to hearing from you and see how things progress. Right. Thank, thank you very you. much. And we'll be right back.